Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. We welcome all our viewing, listening audience today. Um, Dr. Anthony Bright and Dr. Trees Bright, we're founders and pastors of the World at Christ Ministry. We're going to be teaching about being driven by God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And this is part one of a series of being driven by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. He wants to have full control over us. Once He gets hold of us, He controls to drive us in comfort, in peace, in joy, in pleasure, in heaven and earth, in tranquility, and His righteousness, prosperity, and all His best. When you are being driven by the Holy Spirit, you are also protected Amen. from the world, from the flesh, from the devil. Holy Spirit doesn't drive anyone who is resisting Him. If you oppose Him, He will not drive you. See, we are, driven, we are driven by three things. Either by the Spirit, by the flesh, or by the devil. And everybody falls in that category. Some flee flop. Some, sometimes they are driven by the Spirit, some are driven by the flesh. Hello, some are driven by the, by the devil. They, and every one of them will produce fruit. Say fruit. Fruit. Right. See? When you are driven by the Holy Spirit, you bring refreshing to people. Jesus was driven by the Holy Spirit, but he will first be filled with the Spirit overflowingly before he can be driven by him. Thank you. Mark chapter 1, verse 15. No, Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 12. Mark chapter 1, verse 9. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. Verse 10, And start, straightway coming up on the water, he saw the heavens open and a spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came So he's filled now. See, Jesus was filled with the spirit. The spirit descended upon him. Mm -hmm. spirit upon him. Okay. The spirit of the descended upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit drives him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness forty days tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, Amen. So we see that when the Spirit came upon Jesus, he also filled him. So he was driven by the Holy Spirit. That's why when the Pharisees came against him to do things contrary to the will of the Father, he said no. When you are driven by the Holy Spirit to be peaceful, you be like a river. Say river. river. That's not you don't finish that challenging from religious devils. Hello? But you always overcome. Who, whoever is driving you will cause you to be prosperous or cause you to live in poverty. If you're driven by the flesh, then you're living in poverty and shame. Yeah. But if you're driven by the Spirit, you're going to live in prosperity and success, be successful. Because the Holy Spirit's never going to lead you anywhere that um, is going to cause you hurt or harm or you know any type of damage. The Holy Spirit always looking for your best interest at heart. Because He says, I wish above all things that your soul may prosper and be in health. That you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So God wants us to prosper, so He's not going to lead us anywhere that's not going to help us or lead us to someone else that needs help. Amen. In Luke chapter 4, verses 1, verses 14 to 18, we see how Jesus was driven. The whole life of Jesus was driven by the Spirit. That's why He did not do His own will. Need to start doing your own will. You are no more driven by the Spirit. Amen. You are resistant, grieving, vexing, tempting provoking, despising, and displeasing Him. But we are called, saved, to please the Holy Spirit. When you are being driven by the Holy Spirit, you become a friend of the Holy Spirit. You always do things to please Him. You are no more living for yourself anymore. If you don't have your own way, you don't get upset with your bad attitude. That is, it's not driving you, you are driving yourself. See? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Luke 4, verse 1, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. See, he was led. In Mark, they say he was driven. 
So we are being led by the Spirit, He is driving, say driving. He is not driving us to, to help us, no. He is driving us, hallelujah, to comfort us, to bring heaven down on earth for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But we have to yield, not to be driven by the Holy Spirit. Because of you are yielding yourself to you be driven by that person. It's in the book of Romans chapter 6. Yielding, surrendering, See? submitting. And also submitting to God given authority. Amen. Because if you can't submit to God given authority, you can't submit to the Holy Spirit. That's true. Because He ordained all this chain of authority. Holy Ghost did that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we see how important, hallelujah, we need to continue to surrender, pursue, and be driven by the pressure of the Holy Spirit. Because He is a person. Mm-hmm. See, a piece of stone cannot drive you, only a person can drive you. God, the Holy Spirit, is a person. He wants. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, let's read verse 14 to Luke chapter 4, starting the 14th verse to 18. Luke 4, verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into the He returned. He still been driven. He didn't leave the Holy Ghost behind. He let the Holy Ghost leave him. Like Saul, King Saul. The Holy Ghost left him. Because he was doing it to display the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's why when David fell into that adulterous relationship, he said, say, say, Create in me a clear heart, O God, renew a raspberry with David, cast me out of your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Amen. Psalm 51, 9, 10, 11. And uphold me with your free spirit. The Spirit has to uphold you, not to drive you. Say, uphold. uphold. To uphold me, to sustain you, keep you from falling. Who's upholding you? Is it the flesh? See? The word and the spirit is according you, hallelujah. You become a partaker, partaker, partaker of the Holy Spirit. You continue to be driven by Him. When you're being, when He's driving you, people in the flesh will criticize you. Oh boy. They'll find fault with you. What does He take? He is. What does He say? She is. See? Because they want you to come to their level where there's misery, defeat. When you are being driven by the Holy Spirit, no more defeat in your life. Life challenges will come, but you know, no one will take you down. Because the one who is driving you is lifting you up. Amen. God lift up the meek. meek. You have to be meek, you have to be driven by the Holy Spirit. No meekness if you are walking pride, which has dropped you and picked somebody else. It's a pride who cannot walk in the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And in Micah chapter 6, I think that it is all that the Lord God requires from you but to do justly, to love mercy, and walk humbly the Lord thy God. Keep on this. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So he was being driven by the Spirit, the Spirit upon him, is in him, with him, the Spirit upon me. So there's oneness between Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. See, we knew how Jesus was being driven. When he came to the temple, he did not take the book. They gave it to him. He did not snatch it. They gave the book to him before he was able to read it. After he finished reading the book, he came to the minister. He didn't take over. Because he's driven by the Spirit. The Spirit respects protocol. Praise the living God. Those who are watching today want to accept Christ. Say this prayer with us. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I ask you to forgive me for all my sins. I ask to forgive for all my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And save me. And save me. And make me your child. And make me your son. I rededicate my life. I rededicate my life. To you. To you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.